Good morrow, scholars. Um, this is my second attempt at uh, doing this. So I purchased Life and Death, Twilight Reimagined. Now, at first I thought, wow, this book is huge. Why would she do this? And then I picked it up and I realized this is why. Twilight, the original, uh, Twilight that is, is uh, in the second, makes up the second half of this book. And believe it or not, all right, look. Okay. See? The words are actually upside down. They actually flipped it. Okay. So this is going to be a quick little review on uh, the foreword, somewhat, and the preface. I just want to test the waters with this. I want to turn this into a little mini-series. It won't be a mini-series because... Alright, now, I've read... Uh, all of the Twilight books at, from New Moon on, and I never actually read the original Twilight. I did uh, watch all the movies, unfortunately, and um, I've never gotten around to reading the book Twilight. So I thought since I heard about the 10th anniversary with Life and Death and Twilight Reimagined, that it would be a really good thing to do, uh, especially for my mom. Number one, she loves Twilight, and I thought she would love to have this. That's why I bought it. But also, I much like what I do with horror movies, I'll watch the remake first, and then the original, and I'll compare them. So I'm going to be doing this with Twilight, and this will be my horror um, series, I guess, for uh, the channel for now. Since um, my friend Miga couldn't come up with any good uh, horror movie lists this year, which is disappointing, but at the same time, uh, I'm not really interested in any horror movies at the moment. So, actually, um, starting the 19th, I'm going to be watching every single Paranormal Activity movie in order. So, we'll do that. That'll be fun, I think. Anyway, but back to uh, Twilight Reimagined. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is a gender-swapped version of the original Twilight. Bella becomes Bo... Buford, I don't remember the name she picked. Uh, Edward becomes Edith, I think. Uh, Jacob becomes Julia. Uh, the, the only thing, well, technically it's four things. Two group or two sets of characters uh, stay the same. Uh, that is to say, Charlie, her father, his father, and Renee, the mother. And her reasoning behind it was actually. Um, thought out and made very good sense, uh, which I was surprised. E -e -e -e. Sorry, Mom. And she said it was because she couldn't see um, uh, Renee as a man getting custody of uh, a child over Charlie as a woman because of the wildly different lifestyles. And it makes perfect sense, you know what I mean? Uh, somebody like Renee, but a man in, in, you know, the late 80s would never be given custody over a mother who has a steady job and uh, such ties to one's community. Ever, even, even today, that would be uh, highly doubtful. So I can respect that and I can understand that. And there's no real way for the uh, drama to make sense, swapping this, that, and that. So that, that made perfect sense, and I'm fine with it, because Charlie was the, the only character I genuinely cared about. Especially in the movies. Oh, man. Uh, I felt so bad for him. Anyway. Two other characters, uh, background characters that I think are only mentioned twice, also remain the same, because they were so inconsequential, they made no difference whatsoever to the story overall. Um... That's not her reasoning behind it, but that's essentially the meaning behind her words. Now then, what I'm planning on doing is reading, I'll either read the full book first of uh, Twilight Reimagined, and then I'll read the full book of Twilight. Or, what we can do is I'll read one chapter from Twilight, and one chapter from Life and Death, Twilight Reimagined, not in that order. And then 
however many times a week that I read a chapter, I'll do a quick review of, and so that you and I can get uh, some ideas bouncing back and forth perhaps if you were interested about the pros and cons, the uh, compare and contrast of Twilight, the original series, and Twilight Reimagined, and see if one truly is better than the other because it came out first, or it's uh, more interesting because, you know, the gender roles are switched. Now then, I'm going to read the preface. I kind of went over um, the foreword at the, the first time I tried to record this. Uh, bear with me. I'd never given much thought to dying, though I'd had reason enough in the last few months. But even if I had, I wouldn't have imagined it like this. I stared across the long room into the dark eyes of the hunter, and she looked pleasantly back at me. At least it was a good way to die in the place of someone else, someone I loved. Noble, even. That ought to count for something. I knew that if I'd never gone to Forks, I wouldn't be about to die now. But terrified as I was, I couldn't bring myself to regret the decision. When life offers you a dream so far beyond any of your expectations, it's not un it's not reasonable to grieve when it comes to an end. I feel like unreasonable would be a better word here. The hunter smiled in a friendly way as she sauntered forward to kill me. Okay, so as you can see, for the most part, the meaning behind or the meaning of the words spoken are for the most part the same, however changed. And let us compare the preface if there is such a one, in the original. Bella. I'd never given much thought to how I would die, though I'd had reason enough in the last few months. But even if I had, I would not have imagined it like this. I stared without breathing across the long room into the dark eyes of the hunter, and he looked pleasantly back at me. Surely it was a good way to die in the place of someone else, someone I loved. Noble even, that ought to count for something. I knew that if I'd never gone to Forks, I wouldn't be facing death now, but terrified as I was, I couldn't bring myself to regret the decision. When life offers you a dream so far beyond any of your expectations, it's not reasonable to grieve when it comes to an end. The hunter smiled in a friendly way as he sauntered forward to kill me. Now, as you can see, that's the first time I've ever read the preface. Although I think Bella, Kristen Stewart, and Twilight read most of this, or spoke it aloud, rather, in the first Twilight. Hi, Artemis! Book. And as you can see, for the most part, it remained unchanged. Uh, a few different words misplaced, or switched around, or added, um, depending on how you want to look at it, which isn't too bad. Uh, however, I feel like one of my biggest complaints with um, Stephanie Meyer and Twilight in general is um, purple prose, number one. You know, uh, a bunch of needlessly uh, convoluted <laughs> words thrown in to make the book sound smarter than it is. And, you know, that's fine and all. I mean, I grew up on Goosebumps, and they, uh, even back then, I recognized the fact that they were kiddish. Uh, but there are better ways than purple prose purple cons, perhaps, I don't know. Uh, a good example of this being done well, especially in regards to a children's series that I used to read all the time, uh, Animorphs. It started out very much for kids. Uh, it was uh, like your typical Saturday morning cartoon at first. And it grew and grew and turned in some, into something that was just horrifying. I remember early on in, like, book nine, they trick uh, Visser Three, the main bad guy of the series, um, into bathing in grape juice to get rid of the skunk smell because one of the skunks, or one of the animorphs that turned into a skunk and sprayed him. Because that is the perfect defense against aliens. And they never got around to telling him the proper uh, remedy which I thought was funny because so many Yerks were in control of uh, humans that they would have known. I guess he refused to accept it. And then it ended uh, with 
a bunch of war trials and a lot of people being put to death for crimes that they committed during the uh, war or during the invasion, rather. And there was it's just a huge um, difference. Like if I hadn't grown up with the series, uh, I wouldn't have been able to wrap my head around it at the end of it by starting, you know, there and then get reaching the end. And it was just, it was amazing. And I didn't get that feeling from uh, like New Moon or Eclipse or Breaking Dawn or the short Second Life of Bree Tanner. I've forgotten like, exactly the title. That's not important right now. Okay, so you guys let me know if you would prefer that I read one book entirely and then the other, and then I do, um, I guess not a synopsis, but I keep you updated with what I'm reading, and we can talk about it, like, say you want to have some things uh, that I discuss in the next episode uh, for this one, I can talk about that, and I'll read this, so you guys don't have to, or for those of you that do want to read it, and you want someone to discuss uh, the book, uh, earnestly, I will also do that. I have no problems. Uh, I've always said anyone who can write, even if I don't like it, deserves some sort of respect. Even if uh, I feel like they don't deserve it, Joss Whedon. Or if you'd prefer, I read one chapter of Twilight, reimagined, and then one chapter of Twilight, the original. And I'll compare the two and uh, it'll be a learning experience for all of us, especially those of you that don't want to read this book. And I can go over it, and you'll know all the ins and outs, and we can discuss uh, all this stuff. So you don't have to read it, but you get to know about the book. And if you want to bash people's love for this series, uh, please don't use me as um, your reference or go-to guy. Uh, that's not why I made this channel, even though it's totally why I'm doing this. Alright, so I'll leave this up here for a couple of days. I'll see. I'll, I think for the next video, I'm actually just going to read the first two chapters. Well, you know, first one for your second, however. And then, I'll, and then the first book, or, excuse me, the first chapter of Twilight Reimagined, I'll read first, and then I'll compare the two. And then we can decide from there where we go. What do you think, Iggy? He's never looked more uh, disapprovingly at me in my entire life. And I've had him since middle school. How old are you now? He's about 15, going on 16. I really hope that he can live long enough for me to sing to him. You are 16, going on 17. Anyway, my mom likes that movie a lot. My dad says it steals his soul a little bit at a time every time. Uh, they watch it. So, yeah, let me know if you guys are looking forward to this, or if you're not, or if you think I'm going to die by the end of the series, or if I'm going to kill myself by the end of the series, you know, whichever happens. I feel like I'm going to anger a lot of people, and I feel like a lot of people are going to get angry at me, so you never know. But until next time, goodbye, everybody.